So today's talk, I'm going to basically tell you a little bit about the sailing. Um, and um, um, a, a colleague of yours, uh, Mark Paisy, sort of um, I was flying with recently, um, sort of said, oh, can you, could you do a little um, talk about um, your adventures? And um, so I've, I've got this presentation already made up, which was more um, pointed at um, sailors. But I've um, added a few um, nice diving photos and we'll, we'll, we'll have a good discussion about the diving we did as well as we um, go around. But first of all, I'll sort of describe the route um, and, and then go on to the diving and then uh, just, just some, some nice sort of um, pictures of the wildlife and fun we had as we went round. And um, so essentially, uh, we decided to um, go rest about and do what they call a blue water route. So we get down to the tropics, get out, get out of the UK um, weather systems, down into the tropics, and then you're um, nicely sailing in good warm weather, um, less storms, and um, generally the wind um, flows quite a nice steady breeze um, to let you get um, sail westward around the world. And um, essentially we chose to be canals, not capes. So we went through the... the through all the Suez, um, through, through all the canals, the sort of Suez, sorry, not the Suez, the Panama Canal first, as we, um, and um, and then Suez Canal, and then we even came up the, um, the um, canals of France, essentially to, um, so you don't have to go around the capes of um, Good Hope and Good Horn, and uh, which is where all the strong winds are, strong weather is, um, and much more um, smoother ride um, and warmer. So. Um, in all, we visited 42 countries, as it says, um, sailed 32,000 miles um, and over a three year period. Very much a, um, um, a, a time length chosen for its adventure. We didn't want to make this, you know, the rest of our lives um, bumming around the world and doing this and that and sailing. It was very much a let, let's do this and come back and get on with the standard rat race of the UK. Um, so there you go. Trade wind sailing is, um, as I said, get down to the tropics and we're sailing with the tr trade winds. There's the boat sailing itself with the auto helm in, um, which is mostly how we sailed most of the time. And the sails nicely out, catching the breeze. Um, the trade winds, nice consistent winds, always behind and steady, as it says, and much easier than sort of sailing like that, where all the crockery flies everywhere. and um, you're bouncing along into the waves and such like. I think that photo is twisted a little bit for effect, but um, I'm sure you catch the drift. Um, down in the tropics, much warmer too. Yes, um, there's um, a couple of friends who helped us go across the Bay of Biscay, as you can see. In um, And of course, um, I couldn't choose when we were going to set off. It was going to be straight off when I leave. And it was um, the 7th of January when we actually set off. So across the Bay of Biscay in January. Um, but soon got down to the warmer climes, as you can see, much more, much warmer and more comfortable. So Bay of Biscay crossing in February. Um, as we set off, as you know, Jed was sort of saying, where are we going to go first and how are we going to do this? I said, well, we're going to go to Ireland. And she sort of, you know, quite, quite quickly realises it's that's not quite the plan of going south is it sort of thing I said and she goes why Ireland I said well we can so we can sit and drink some proper Guinness um and she goes yes well, well why Ireland I said well so we can sit and drink some proper Guinness whilst we wait for a nice calm weather window and essentially um doing a big adventurous sailing and all sailing really is um choose your weather don't let the weather choose how you're going to sail it sort of thing. So um, that was us setting off one fine um, February morning um, on a very glassy sea to cross the um, Bay of Biscay. And it stayed pretty much like that most of the way. The wind picks up a little bit, but um, none of these horrendous storms which we hear about over the Bay of Biscay. Um, and we, we tripped down to um, Tenerife um, as a sort of... Um, um, one of the closest islands over to um, the Caribbean. And um, and then some friends flew out and joined us um, in Tenerife as we stopped up. Um, and we basically our first really long distance trip 
um, two and a half thousand miles, and um, there was five of us, so we had a little um, rotor of um, being on shift and off shift, and um, someone was mother for a whole day, so they so they sort of slept, get their sleep patterns back, and things like that. Um, we planned, always plan for the worst and hope for the best. Um, we planned for twenty eight days at sea, and it only took us actually eighteen days. Um, but you can imagine we had twenty eight days of food for five people. Um, no freezer. We did have a fridge. Um, so the first few days, there's some sort of fresh stuff. But um, yeah, lots of tins of tuna and such like. Uh, water, the most important bit. for. Um, um, so we had sort of three sources of water. Um, and um, we had, as you can see there, lots of um, big bottles of water. And that was enough water for one person per day. Um, over 28 days uh, we obviously had um our ship's tank water um that was 400 liters and that would obviously um do us good as well but um tank water can get um infected or can can leak out and so um just want lots of different reliable systems we also had a little water maker as well which um if everything went to pot we'd be able to make um our own water not huge amounts for sh um, showers and baths but enough to sort of um drink um keep us keep us quenched and then you set off across the atlantic and um you know it's that's it. trade wind sailing is it quite easy that's our motley crew i'm not taking i'm taking the photo but um sitting around um mike and i played with the sextants we, we took sunset um sightings and we got quite accurate um i got to within a mile of our GPS position, because obviously with the GPS there. As you can see at the top of the photo, we have a solar panel up there, and we actually increased the um, two solar panels um, through the three-year journey. And there's a little sh um, uh, wind generator, electrical wind generator, um, showing there as well. I mean, we get to the Caribbean, and we had lots of fun, and we basically um, had loads of little islands to hop around. Um, our main task, our main mission when we set off was to get to Antigua in time for Antigua Race Week in April. So we had four months um, to get there. And um, essentially, we, yeah, we had a great time. Um, lots of friends came out for Antigua Race Week. We had a very overladen boat um, racing around. Lots of good fun. And then um, we basically didn't have anything, any idea what to do next, really. We had no plans at that stage. Um, and at the end of April, the Caribbean's um, hurricane season's just starting. So once again, it's kind of choose your weather time. And we had the decision whether to sort of go somewhere safe in the Caribbean um, and sit out the, the season or um, to make a run for it and um, get out of the Caribbean and essentially in the in the uk summertime you the um the hurricanes are in the northern hemisphere and so going through the panama canal you then go into the southern hemisphere um where it's nice and quiet um for six months and it and so that weather system flip flops every six months you need to be the other side of the equator from um, where the um tropical storms are um or descending further down out out of the tropics so we decided to make a run for the um uh, panama canal we had lots of good fun on the way um and um going through the panama canal was an amazing experience it really was um as you can see dodging um super freighters and then we um got into the south pacific which was just superb another big crossing actually even further um I think it was 3,000 miles going, leaving the Galapagos Islands to get to Polynesia. And that's Bora Bora, you can see there in um, French Polynesia. Um, yeah, fabulous. Um, good long crossing. And on all that crossing, um, it was just Jed and myself at this stage. Um, we'd sort of got used to the boat, got comfortable with it. Um, and um, we set alarm systems with the radar so that any other big boats coming within a certain range, it would wake us. And we, we essentially went, went to bed at night, leaving the boat to steer itself. And um, you'd wake up to every, quite quickly hearing ruffles or something. But um, with the trade wind sailing, nice, nice and straightforward. And then obviously, as you get close to land, you obviously um, go back into a shift system. 
Um, but um, essentially, our plan was um, to get down to Sydney um, in in time for Christmas, which basically means we drop out of that um, tropical zones and um, and then we could um, hole up for six months um, outside outside the tropics there. And we had a great time in Sydney. Um, as you can see, we moored up underneath Sydney Harbour Bridge for New Year's Eve. We had um, fantastic Christmas um, lobster sat on the boat after a little swim. And um, and then we even left the boat and went sort of a so-called walkabout around Australia for a bit, um, few weeks as well, exploring the Red Centre and, and other places. Oh, there we go. That's, that's it there. So... Um, yeah, we went to the Red Centre, saw Uluru Rock and um, and then carried on out to Perth and caught the train back from Perth all the way back up to Sydney. A bit of surfing there. Uh, we carried um, our, our dinner suits and ball gowns all the way around the world just in case we needed them, like going to the opera at Sydney. Yeah, dusted them out every now and again. We then backtracked a little bit um, back to New Zealand, uh, where most um, yachties um, come out of the tropics to and go towards. Um, and um, and again, we hold up. With, um, New Zealand's very great, great place for doing um, boat maintenance and and improvements. And um, but at the same time, we were there um, for a few months and even bought a car and travelled around. And, um, and this is where we did, um, so we did some repairs and we kind of decided we needed a few more toys on, on our boat, um, good old Albert. And so we, um, and this is where we invested in um, diving um, equipment of our own, which I'll come on to in a minute, as well as a few others. And then essentially, so that was the first year. So the, um, we took two years to actually come home. We realized we were traveling far too quickly. And, um, so we come coming up from Australia. We went up um, to Vanuatu, and then oh, sorry, from New Zealand up to Vanuatu, and then over the top to, um, of Australia and um, Indonesia and Southeast Asia of um, Singapore and Thailand, uh, across the Indian Ocean on beautiful evenings like that, um, and then round the Horn of Africa, and around you know did the. Um, run the gauntlet with the pirates but um we we did that in 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 a little convoy and go, went up the red sea so red sea going up the red sea the first time we, we had to battle against winds because um it the, the the wind always blows down the red sea north to south and um no matter what season but that's us holding up in in a, that photo there is hold, we're inside a reef in in the red sea so you can see it's nice and calm where we are and you can just see the little um uh, a reef just as the colour change of the sea on the on the, on the edge of the photo, of the horizon there, and uh, and of course as you can see some poor voices came and swam around us one lovely morning, and then again time to dodge the super tankers and um, and go up the Suez Canal, and uh, we had a moat on our boat, but I don't fancy that those fishermen with their oars against that super tanker. Um, and then into the Mediterranean. Um, yeah, lovely time. That one, that photo there, that's in Turkey, slowly potted around. By this stage, funds were starting to get a bit tight and we were, and we sort of um, decided to get ourselves home via the French canals. So we weren't, instead of doing the Bay of Biscay, we thought let's do something interesting. Um, inspired by... Um, Rick Stein's um, um, travels, and I think he did a um, um, the Canal du Midi in Toulouse is one of his food programs. And um, Jed was saying, "Oh, I've always fancied doing it. Let's do it." So, not too much trouble to take the mast off, even on a big big yacht like that. And uh, we just about um, scraped under the bridges, and also our keel, um, we ploughed a few furrows in the mud. Of the canals every now and again but um it was a lovely really lovely trip good fun because because obviously you just stop and tie up each night and um go and explore the um the nearby villages etc but the scuba diving here's what you're here for so um we did lots of scuba diving um 
it was we had a great time i've just been looking at my blog book from all that time ago um a man looks like i did about um 65 dives over um three years um training wise um i was already a paddy diver i'd done a um my advanced my paddy course in the maldives many years before and um and then went to koh tao in thailand once um and did an advanced water there um jed was um completely new to it so when we got to barbados so she hadn't um done anything she just absolutely loved it um and then when we got to thailand um obviously a lot of experience under the belt after two years of diving she did her advanced there um yeah am i allowed to mention paddy to the bzac people yeah, diving. <laughs> so the first year of diving we, we generally obviously um i had uh, my own um, bcd and um, weights and bits and, and masks and snort and fins and stuff but um we we used um, the dive shops um which were absolutely fabulous it was a kind of great way of getting um experience around the caribbean not, it was lovely to sort of um, tie up, we do shopping, do all sorts of things of keeping a boat going um, and then go, oh, there's a dive shop here and, and then um, make out the money to go um, doing some fabulous diving. And, and the memorable places around the world, the Galapagos, um, were outstanding dives, absolutely outstanding. Um, there's Jed just come up from a dive there, kick a rock and... Um, and uh, just um, the amount of um, wildlife above the water, the Galapagos, but all, you know, it's all fascinating and interesting and unique um, because of its location, but also underneath the great um, cold currents, the El Nino well up because of the islands and bring up all the food, which therefore brings all the, um, all the um, um, bigger fish and sharks and such like. So all the hamheads, as you can see, swimming past us. So, um, and then as we cross the Pacific, um, we get to um, the, the beginning of French Polynesia. So all the, all the great islands like Bora Bora and Tahiti um, is, is part of French Polynesia. But um, a whole, it's a huge, huge area. If you look at a map, the, um, the French Polynesia and um, the first set of islands, there's some Marquesas Islands. And then between Marquesas and Tahiti, um, where these amazing um to them are two islands uh, and they're more just um atolls coral atolls just fringes of um coral land um and um and the, it would just drop off the um it would go from um 20 30 meters and then you can just see this wall just disappearing into the hundreds thousands of meters deep um and amazingly clear obviously there's no um runoff from land it's all to sand and it's just amazingly clear. And we had an amazing um, um, shark dive there. And it was um, on Blue Planet. It was very um, shortly after we were there. Um, Blue Planet um, did a thing of all the sharks and seeing about how they're feeding. But um, essentially, we went down. We were on this lovely little dive shop and they dropped down. And um, before we're down there, before we even get in the water, a guy with a camera has gone down and video and videoing us all. And and they've taken a dead fish and it brings the brings the sharks up and we just we just sat there holding onto a bit of coal watching thousands of sharks far too many sharks far too close and sort of thing I think I went through my air quite a lot um, and then by the time we finished that dive we were taking all our kit off it's um, there's this video of us and we go look that's us that's our dive and you know this guy was just a genius he was videoing and editing as he goes along it was incredible um unfortunately i'm being i haven't i haven't didn't apply myself to see if i could even try and get um a few clips of that but um if you watch the blue blue planet series there's um a whole section on it um and so we get to new zealand um we did some other great dives there we dived on um uh, the Greenpeace um, Rainbow Warrior, which was obviously um, had a sorry end in New Zealand in Auckland Harbour, um, and uh, but they towed it round um, and made it a wreck dive, and it was just absolutely beautiful because the um, Rainbow Warrior, but there it was um, covered in beautiful, colourful um, early early set onset um, coals. 
But in New Zealand, as I, I mentioned earlier, we, we bought a compressor um, and our own tanks to essentially take the, um, start doing the diving ourselves without having to go to um, the dive shops. Um, a lot more flexible, cheaper in the long run. Um, and, and then we had, and, and it was just fabulous. We've got a boat and we've got tanks, which we can fill up at, um, whenever we want. Um, and then, this, and this, of course, we've got to start now um, going off on our own. We don't have a nice guide and the guide um, and the boats to look after us. Um, we use there's guidebooks. There's lots of guidebooks of dive sites and stuff like that. And, and then slowly we became quite confident to plan our own. We'd look at a bit of, of, of sea or where we're anchored and just have a look. Oh, well, should we just jump in from here? Um, obviously, diving from a yacht is actually quite difficult. It's got its own problems. Um, sometimes when it's just the two of us, A, there's no safety cover up top. But also, also you know, with a with the yacht with its keel, you can't actually get in and leave it um, where you want to be diving. Um, quite often, it, you'd, you'd take the dinghy, go off on the dinghy and then and drop that, um, the anchor of the dinghy to, to dive from. Um so yeah, all sorts of different little problems, but absolutely fabulous. Um, and here, and and had some incredible dives. Indonesia, um, absolutely amazing diving experiences. Um, we really did. So the top right hand corner um, is an interesting photo. Um, you can just see the swirling water. So that's, um, and then in the in the top left hand side of that photo, there's you can just see a submerged rock. So we go and dive on that rock because it obviously we're slowly learning that these rocks and stuff um, is where all the where it all hangs out. But um, you can you can see the, the currents which were flowing backs and forwards around the Komodo Islands. And one dive we went to, we took the dinghy to we we um, we dropped the, the anchor. We went down for a dive. We swam against the currents. Um, and then as we turn around to come back, we swim against the cones again and we, and we come back and the, and the dinghy's straining against its anchor and uh, we get into the dinghy and we race off back towards Albert, the boat. And, um, and of course, that's straining against the anchor as the, as the a good five knots of current um, between the islands of Komodo, between the Indonesian islands, nearly caught us out. But there we go. Um, and some superb fish, as you can see here. Um, a lot of these photos were taken in the Gilly Isles, um, just off Bali, a really good diving site. And also um, there we also saw um, sunfish as well, which was quite incredible. Um, moved on up to Thailand. Um, again, absolutely gorgeous, starting to get back into trodden areas. So you can see the dive boats around um, the islands of Koh Phi Phi there. They would guide us to go, oh, there's obviously somewhere good to dive. Lots of good, lots of good fish there to see. And then our final year, um, we sort of, um, as we moved back, we came back across the Maldives. Um, it'd be rude not to dive on that, but unfortunately a bit restricted when we were checking in, they were quite um, officious. We had to just stay on our own island. We, we even got a bit told off because we went off to a little reef, which we saw on the, on the charts would be good. Um, and then up the Red Sea, again, another um, uncharted or untrodden um, area to be diving in and gorgeous for it. Um, and we ended up in this reef um, quite by accident, not realising um, it was Jacques Cousteau's um, little, one of his labo laboratories. And we even went up into his little dive bell, which still had air inside um, underwater. And I've written comedy diving in Hagada, so we get to the top of the Red Sea. And we went for a dive of our own and we were nearly bumped, ran over, bumped into the number of people diving on this site was just quite extreme. Um, yeah, uh, not uh, could almost feel it was sad um, because, you know, the reef is suffering, but it made us realise just how lucky we were to have been in a, on our own in the Red Sea on some reefs, uh, untouched reefs. Um, there you go, so there's some lovely reef diving. And we um, dived on a, a shipwreck called the Umbria um, in, in the Red Sea. That was an Italian World War II. Um, and the dolphins were always there. That was in, we, we took that photo just snorkeling whilst we were in the lagoon um, in Sudan. 
And of course, it wasn't just the underwater stuff. I'm going to flick through some pictures quickly. And Dave, tell me if it, if it freezes again. Um, uh, just um, some lovely little pictures. The Galapagos, I highly recommend. Um, the old adage of go before it's gone. Um, the fabulous, fabulous place above and below the sea. The sea lions were so playful. We used to laugh at them all the time. They climb up on your boat, you scare each other <laughs> each morning, and then they come and blow bubbles at you when you're, when you're diving. And the albatross is forever with us, the South Seas, and the dolphins as well. I saw a few whales, um, all, unfortunately always from the surface. Um, and this 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 one here was breaching with its little baby, and we would just stop the boat and just and just it was quite amazing, it really was. Crocodiles in Darwin, we we bumped into a rock with the keel, and um, I had to do a quick check of it in, in rock, croc infested waters. And I tell you, I was still dry as I got out after being right under. I did it as fast as I could. Komodos, dragons, yeah, absolutely. Um, we got up into Borneo, went to see Roger in a in a sanctuary and um and all the other orangutans there. Sri Lanka was fabulous. When he got stampeded as they came down the high street to go to um um to go to the river for their, their daily bath. Had lots of other fun. That was our first fish we caught, having been told we'll never catch a fish. And look how look how happy we are. Um, we did get better. There's Jed with um, a nice big dolphin fish, or mahi mahi. Um, and then uh, one day we were just um, just about to anchor in the real vents, and we caught this huge fish. So we went and presented it to the chief of the village to ask if we could anchor it off his off his beach. Made fish pies, good old bacon and eggs. Made made Pacific. It's amazing what you can you can keep in a little fridge. Some cheesecake and some wine. But a bit of lobster. Um, bought in the markets on Christmas Day in in Sydney. Had amazing fun in learning about the cultures all around. There's Fiji, how they live. And the Eritrea were inviting inviting to this person's home, and they they cooked us a feast. It was it was magical. Especially that's their town hall. They're just still recovering after um, their civil war. Their, their generosity was enormous. Did a bit of white, white water rafting, kite surfing. We bought these blow up canoes, which were really handy in New Zealand. And the markets were always fascinating. So this is Vanuatu market and um, Indonesia. And they just get so colourful. They put co-op to shame. When we climbed a, a volcano and it was at night and it was erupting, it was bubbling away. Silly things you do in life. <laughs> um, yeah. Off to see the pyramids in Egypt. But finding a perfect little anchorage is just heavenly. It's just what you need. And um, the best bit actually was the sailing. It was just lovely to be sailing. Watching the sunsets. Even the sunrises. There we go. That's a beautiful sunrise. That's, that was taken in the middle of Pirate Alley. An amazing world beneath the waves. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is... Um, my little presentation.